Welcome, Jackie, and thank you so much for being our guest speaker for the Rewilding community, and we're really grateful to have you. We were, just before we started this recording, we we're having a little trip down memory, memory lane, remembering being with Jackie in Salt Spring Island and hearing about her adventures there. Yeah. <laughs> Gave us some ideas of what to do the next time we go, <laughs> when we're able to go. <laughs> but we're really grateful to have you here, and we'll include your full bio um, for the group and email that we send out. But Jackie is a three principles practitioner, and you've been on a, a journey of evolution with the understanding and Jackie and I had a conversation probably about a month ago now and she was sharing some of her journey with me and I thought you know this is such a rich conversation and I thought it would be really great to share with you as the uh, you know all of the members of the group because we're all on that journey looking how do we um, make this our own how do we see it more deeply how do we not get caught up in dogma and you know the 3P political, uh, you know, the party line, all the kind of stuff, not that there is one, but that we can make up about it. And how do we really honor the own unfolding within ourselves of the understanding? And I know that you really love looking in the spiritual direction and, and that some of the earlier um, recordings and sharings of Sydney Banks. So we're just looking forward to hearing what's present for you now and what that journey has been like. Thank you. I, I thought you were going to say that to avoid being caught by the three P police. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there are police. <laughs> this is a whole other level that I don't not aware of. <laughs> uh, she did say the things we make up. <laughs> <laughs> I did clarify. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Jackie. Thank you so much for you know being willing to do this. I, I'm really looking forward to talking to you and hearing more. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here um, and uh, you know it's just a surprise when Rahini said I'd love to speak to you more about this because I mean I'm sure like people that are, are in your group and who are going to be listening to this you're learning the principles and um, you're learning about life really that the principle is, is life um, and, and, it, and it's just an opportunity for us to have an understanding of what's really going on for us. You know, life is naturally ebbs and flows. We have good days, we have bad days, we have so many different experiences in our life as human beings, you know. As women, I'm, I'm in my 50s now, I'm, I'm, my body's changing, my life's changing, my memory's changing, there's so many things <laughs> that happen to us as human beings. Yeah and um, relationships and marriages and just so many things that, you know, the principles is a description and it helps us have a bit more ease with life when we kind of know what's going on. Like my partner is um, a mechanic um, and he has been for, he's retired now, he's a retired man, but um, you know, he was a mechanic for over 40 years and he started when he was 17 he was building cars, engines. He was he was taught by the old British um, mechanics. So his job at, at 16 as an apprentice was like taking a car engine apart, over you know, having over two, 3,000 screws and <laughs> building them back up again. So, you know, he can work on any classic car near enough to get it working, right? Yeah. But also what the good thing about it for him, because he's been doing it so long and it's like many of us that have been doing a trade for a while, or learning something for a while, and we have experience in it, even being a parent or, or um, you know, just in our jobs, you kind of, um, it kind of gives you a direction of where things are going. So for instance, when his, he's got clients that he's had for like 30, 23 years, 30 years, they just won't leave him. And they'll be driving on the motorway and they'll say something like, They'll call him up and say, oh, my God, I can hear this noise. I think my, my car engine's going to drop out. And then he'll say, he'll say, tell me, tell me what's going on. And he said, you can drive back to London. They're in Birmingham, say, that, um, four miles away, or four, four hours away or five hours. Away. And, you know, should I get a, a mechanic up here? And he'll say, well, tell me what's going on. He hears what's going on sometimes. Sometimes they put the phone and he, he knows what direction or what's going on for that car. Mm. I liken the principles to that. It's like, it's, we have lots of different experiences, things are happening, and then we have experiences about what's happening in the world or in our lives. And sometimes when we don't know what's going on, it can feel really confusing. Mm. 
can feel really scary. It can feel like the end of the world. I've had many days in my life where I thought, oh my God, that that's the, I can't bear this. It's too embarrass embarrassing or too shameful or, you know, you just feel like it's the end or the end of a relationship when you've just had a big row and you just, and you like somebody, you know, it's just like, oh God, it's over. They'll never call me back again. And then you're married 30 years later. Do you know? <laughs> You know, you know, when we have those moments where we just think, that's it, or I don't know what to do, or I'm confused, which is so natural. But the principles also helps us understand that that's natural. And that when we remember that our thought is creating our experience in every moment, um, and our feelings are temporary and our thoughts are temporary, it just gives us a little bit of space when we when we remember that because we don't always remember it mm -hmm. but this is i'm just maybe having anxious thinking right now or really scary thinking right now or thoughts about the past that might might be traumatic and they're scaring me right now um or just opportunities when opportunities come in and, and then you feel frightened i mean i recently got opportunities to work in a couple of companies and i got really nervous it's like oh my god haven't done this for ages, can I do it? I've been doing different work for a long time. And I started feeling nervous, like I can't do it. And I just, after a day, and then I spoke to someone, I just thought, oh yeah, God, thought so powerful. It just creates the experience and it's real. Mm. It's real in the moment. It doesn't matter what anyone tells you, it is real. You feel whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking. And, uh, and, then, you, and then you remember what's going on. And I feel really grateful to have that understanding in the background because it allows me to be able to navigate life a little bit easier. Just like my partner can help people navigate their way back home mm -hmm. when their engine feels, sounds like it's gonna fall out. Mm -hmm. And he'll say to them, you can drive that for another two weeks, it's fine. <laughs> you know, but you know, when you're driving somewhere on the motorway, it can be really scary mm -hmm. when you, you don't know what's going on. So, um, yeah, so that's what I, I think is really beautiful about having this understanding. Um, it's been so helpful in my life and in my relationships. Mm -hmm. And with my partner, I came across this maybe halfway in two, two or three years into our relationship. If I didn't have this understanding, I most probably wouldn't be with him now, to be quite honest. I would have thought all my feelings about him are caused by him. Mm. It's him making me feel angry. It's him making me feel frustrated. It's him making me feel bored. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it would just whatever. It would have just been him, him, him. Um, and I would have found, you know, when you think like that, you can find lots of good reasons to back it up. Mm -hmm. you know? And you can talk to friends, and they'll confirm it as well. Because you know, you gather information that is in line with what you're thinking. So it really helped me to, to listen more in my relationship in a, in a much deeper way. Um, it also helped me to listen to myself, to tune into myself. That was the biggest thing really, tune into what's going on for me mm -hmm. and, in, and, and what state I was in, especially at the beginning of the principles, just learning about different states and keep quiet because <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm opinionated and I'm a strong yeah. woman yeah. and and so I just <clears throat> to humble myself because I was just thinking well just all my opinions that don't need to come spilling out mm -hmm. you know um and before I would have thought that was succumbing to someone or you know being mm. submissive mm -hmm. but I just realized no it's not it's I can, you know, and me being quiet just gave him more space. You know, when I wanted to say things, I bit my tongue at the beginning and I had to, I had to sit on my hands at the beginning like this. Cause I really, you know, it's, it's learned, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and then after a while it got to the point where I could just see that it wants to come out. I want to say something, but it may not be the right time to say it now, but maybe we could have a conversation at a different point. Mm -hmm. And that was really one of the biggest learnings for me. 
you know, that I, you know, we can have our conversations. Um, right now I might dominate or get opinionated and not say the right things. I'm not a nasty person, but you know, I know I'm quite, when I'm clear about something and I think it's right, then, you know, I'm going, I'm going that way. So, um, and you know, it just gave me more space in my relationship and in myself to just be, just check yourself really, you know, it's like just checking in on yourself and just thinking, hold on, what's going on here in me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. let's just let's just let's look at this first and then and then see where we go from here Jackie how was that shift for you because I think that's a really key point that you said that you would have thought it would be submissive but yes. then you thought it wasn't submissive because I think people do um sometimes think that when we are talking about weight or um you know, not to necessarily go for it in the moment or looking at state of mind, that it can feel like, you know, we're, we're suggesting, well, that means you're going to be a doormat in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just wondering how that shifted for you. Yeah, sure. Well, I think as I was exploring the principles and in my training, I it just became apparent. It wasn't something that I made myself do. So mm -hmm. if that's something if that's not in your mind, you know, I just got in the, in the moment thought, I don't need to say something right now. It came like that. It, yeah. wasn't, something, it wasn't something that I said, right, I'm gonna, this is my, I didn't make it a strategy. Um, next time he's, we were in an argument or something's not working, I'm not gonna say anything. It didn't work, it wasn't like that. It was more of a sense like, maybe there was a conversation happening and I remember thinking, Mm, okay let me listen mm. and then also what's going on in me that was really the key what's going on in me and 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 then then also it then started to to spread out to let me listen mm -hmm. let me listen and from a place of understanding which is a place of love really yeah mm. let, me, let me listen and because I can do, you know, we, when we're a practitioner or, or working with other people, I don't know if people will have this experience. Sometimes we can listen to other people more than sometimes the people closest to us, closest to us in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we can sit and listen to people for hours and then they'll say something <laughs> and uh -huh. there's no room for it, right? <laughs> so, you know, you, you kind of, it kind of opened up more room Mm -hmm. and, and also see the I was able to see some of the patterns as well like wanting to say something that that's just like a learned behavior like a pattern I could see that conditioning mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I didn't have to act on it but I was aware of it and it was just like oh wow mm -hmm. jumping in here and he could have been cut off from what he's saying or I wouldn't have heard this you know it just I started to notice th that kind of those kind of nuances mm -hmm. that really notice my, my my attention went to those those areas like i don't need to say anything yeah that was in, not just in that relationship i just didn't need to say certain things which was very different for me because i've grown up doing lots of different personal development courses landmark all these types of courses where you ring up people and have conversations with them and you know like i'm <laughs> laughing because i've made those phone calls <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> and i haven't done it for, i haven't done it for many 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 years yeah. but i'm you know i'm comfortable having difficult conversations it doesn't yeah me it's like it's, you know, it doesn't feel difficult. It, feel, yeah. it may feel difficult, but it's just like, well, let's just talk about it. It's like, it's like that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just talk about it. What's the, the more you hide it, it just gets worse. Yeah. But I do know that it's not always comfortable for other people, but, you know, since coming across the principles, I've not really felt the need for a lot of those conversations. Mm. And the thing that I noticed, the, the biggest thing that I noticed with my relationships in my home, because I look after teenage girls as well, that live in my home. Um, and they're homeless and they, they live with me and I provide a home 
um, supported living. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, you just get lots of different characters and personalities. They come from age 17 to 21. Um, and I do it a little bit less now, but I've had so many different characters. And the thing that I really noticed was if I caught myself and something told me don't respond right now because my state of mind might not be in the right place. A day later, when I'm, I'll say, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow when I, feel, when I feel better, in a different place. I just didn't feel the need to talk to it, talk about it. Mm. It just was like, mm. or oh, it could be something really light, mm -hmm. you know, you know mm. something you could just say really quickly while someone's passing. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the difference of having conversations where someone else might be annoyed and you're annoyed and you both go at it together. You know, it's just going to go like that, especially with teenagers. Yeah. Or, or in a relationship, or you could have a conversation coming from a different place. They could be annoyed or whatever, and you can just come from such a neutral place. And I've had so many conversations with people from that place, especially when they're exploded or annoyed. And I've been able to be with those conversations and not take them as personal. I have mm -hmm. done it. In, I have taken things <laughs> personal. But I'm saying, I'm a human being, but there's so much that people say, God, how could you, how can you allow them to do that? And I'm just like, it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Or I know that tomorrow they'll come and say sorry, or, or tomorrow, or tomorrow it'll be okay. It just was less personal because I could see how we operate as human beings. Is that when we are in different states of mind, our, our experience and, and how we behave is different. Mm -hmm. mm. and I could see that really really clearly and then I started getting proof of it because I was now stepping back a little bit so then you start to see what's happening a little bit more now what's you know and then you get proof mm -hmm. you get more and more proof you know some an, a conversation didn't escalate or a conversation I could have had with one of the girls Maybe I've just left it. I know I'll have it in a conversation at another day because I'm going to see her in the kitchen tomorrow or the day after. And it kind of got like two days later, I could still be with it and maybe have the conversation or not. Mm -hmm. like, it really interests me that from being so charged, the energy, when you want to, you've got to say something and it feels urgent. Or if you don't say something, something's going to happen. They're going to walk over you um take advantage think you're a pushover all these thoughts i would be having to a, a day later or two day, two hours later or the, uh, two days later whatever, whatever time uh, whatever it takes you're you're not even feeling like that anymore mm -hmm. and you're thinking do i want this conversation is it worth it <laughs> right. mm -hmm. or if it is if i do have that conversation that I can just talk from a different place, mm -hmm. connect from a different place. And mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to do that. I wasn't trying to connect from a different yeah. place. It just felt like the right thing to do, given the understanding, given what I was learning and yeah. what, what was coming up in my mind to do. I think that's really key because if, if it's heard as this is what you do, then it becomes like a strategy or technique for relationships. And somebody else might hear this understanding and their wisdom might be saying, speak up. Yeah. You're not speaking up. You know, that might be what they need to do in their relationship. And so it can't be prescriptive. It has to be what you're saying is listening to ourselves and listening to that knowing. And for you, that's how it looked. And um, for me, that is how it looked too. But for somebody else, it might be the complete opposite that their wisdom guides them to do. And I think that's really important when you recognize, as you're saying, that it isn't a strategy that you said, okay, this is what I need to do in my relationship. It was what you knew to do in the moment based on seeing something different and fresh. You also start to see a lot of your judgments as well. I start that was what I used to was noticing how critical I was. I remember having some mentoring. Um, I trained with one thought you see many years ago, and and it was when Linda and Mara were around as the facilitators. And I remember having a supervision once with 
of Linda Pransky and she said, um, we were talking about, I was telling her about my relationship and I didn't think it was gonna work. This is about six years ago, so we're still together. <laughs> and, um, and, and in that conversation, what I got from it was that I had a really critical mind, especially in relationships, that I wanted it to be a certain way I thought it should be a certain way. And if it wasn't a certain way, um, it wasn't working or the person wasn't the right person for me. And I couldn't see past all the other things that they were bringing, lo the love and stability and support that I wanted to, it, it just, I wasn't seeing it like that. I just thought that, you know, it's not the right relationship or I don't like that. And, and, and there are things in relationships that you do need to negotiate and talk about and, um, have your knees met and, 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 you know, I'm not talking, I was just thinking that's just overall, there was just this critical trying to have a perfect relationship, I suppose, mm -hmm. and not even knowing I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And just having that session with her, I got to see it like, and also have compassion for it. Like it was okay. I just got to see that what was going on was critical thinking rather it, it being about him mm. and, and, and critical thinking um, in the background you know generating the moods and the experience and so it was helpful to see that mm -hmm. and, own, and, and own that um and because then without without seeing that we're projecting um innocently mm -hmm. yeah that's powerful it's very powerful um I'm having a little bit of critical thinking about my daughter who's in the kitchen bellowing down her cell phone, but I'm pretty sure it's not picking up. I just don't even know. You can't even hear it. that. Yeah. I can. Um, but, I, can't, I can't hear it. Oh, well, good. Well, what I really love, and I, and, and I love that metaphor at the beginning around, uh, you know, your husband being the mechanic and having a, a client call from the freeway and, you know, put you, let, let me hear what's going on. It says, what a great metaphor, because in a sense, it is about deep listening. It is about hearing. It is about looking for that wisdom. Um, and I think that's really powerful. And I feel like, you know, what you're saying in relationship, in a sense, is for me, because I get, you know, as we all do, we all get caught up. I get caught up in an old narrative. Rohini can do something. I can be in a low mood and I can go straight to that narrative. It's so compelling. And that can get activated pretty quickly. Um, but I'm starting to realize, yeah, there's part of it is I can restrain myself from sort of like, you know, getting, getting sucked into it. Um, but for me, it's like, I can also just, um, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's, it's probably my state of mind with my eldest daughter. Um, but, but it's kind of like, for me, this is it. This is the point that I wanted to make is kind of like, for me now it is about the deep listening part of it for me. This is what deep listening looks like to me. It's having, it's about empathy. It's about being able to put myself in their shoes and kind of understand what they're going through. And once I get there, then I'm in a place of compassion and compassion is the secret source. Mm -hmm. That's that's things, that's when I'm not taking it personally, when I've put myself in their shoes, which is another way of really listening deeply. And that's just something that just really, I don't think it ever really occurred to me, which is probably why we were at each other's throats for years, is I just wasn't putting myself in your shoes. I was going to an old narrative, which could be easily activated. Uh, and, and then just really kind of showing up from there. And now more and more, I feel like I'm putting myself in her shoes because that's the first step that I can take to not taking it personally. And also realize is like, Typically now I, I have reference points. It's like, I don't need to take my thinking seriously because I've proved time and time again that that narrative doesn't hold any water 10 minutes time when my mind is settled. Like you say, it's like, it's maybe not even worth having that conversation now because I just don't feel the same way. But 10 minutes ago, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I'm, I'm packing my bags and I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I, I see those as alarm bells now for me. When yeah. I'm heightened or, you know, or something feels urgent, I've got to have it now or, I, or, or um, I need to do it now or I need to speak now or whatever it is, that there's a feeling, there's a sense to that. And we sometimes overlook that, that bodily sensation. 
But to me, that felt like, I thought that feeling was telling me, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. That's what I thought it meant. You've got to do it, it you know, this, it, because it feels like that, you know, these feelings mean it's important, it's serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then what I learned was, no, these feelings are the ones that maybe you could take some space with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just to, to me, they're like alarm bells. Now, don't get me wrong. If I'm walking down the road and I don't feel safe, I'm going to act. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, if there's things that I might have that feeling and I might need to act. I've had to, to act accordingly when I've had that feeling in that in my own home. When because I look after young people and and I've had to just use my intuition and just act straight away. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, say we would out of a hundred. 95% of that urgent feeling, yeah. if we gave it a little bit of space, yeah, we can, we, we, we start to, to see that, oh yeah, just caught up here. Yeah. It's just my thinking. Because the next day, what you're thinking isn't happening, or an hour later, like you said, or two hours later, hasn't yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even a week later, it hasn't happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But in the moment, in the moment, it feels like this, this is information. And that's what I really got, that that, that information is not reliable for me right now. That's yeah. what I really got from my understanding. Yeah. Is, you know, use your own discretion, you know, people listening, you know, and your own intuition and your own wisdom. That's mm -hmm. what I would say. Yeah. And I preface that with anything that comes out of my mouth and don't believe me anybody just checking with yourself but that was the guy that that was my wisdom telling me this urgent feeling that i'm having all right okay yeah it is um it's a smoke screen <laughs> yeah yeah my my critical mind can kind of feel like a fire station like in the old days you used to have a pole they could slide down it's like <laughs> the bell's going off <laughs> gotta put out that fire quick quick just slide down the pole go deal with it and you know yeah. just to take a moment just to take a beat it's like hang on it's like maybe i don't need to trust you know this this experience at this point in time mm -hmm. give it a little bit of room yeah and often when there is a real crisis we do know the difference. Like you're saying that 5% of the time when it is a real crisis, we tend to be able to distinguish that. And isn't it amazing? I think in those moments of crisis, in fact, our biology supports this, we actually slow right down. Yeah. They say in a car crash, it kind of like happens in slow motion. I've had those experiences. There's something about our brain, I don't know, our chemistry mm -hmm. or the equipment or however it works, but we kind of get into a place where we slow down and can kind of perform in that way. So we kind of know, yeah, in that settled state of mind, I can take care of business. But I think you're right, Jackie, it's that feeling of urgency. Sometimes it's like, hmm, but, but, you know, let's be sure about this before we act. Absolutely. Um, and you were just saying, you know, I, I think we naturally, we know how, to, we know what to do in the moment. We can have conversations about the understanding of the principles and our experience of life because you know we love sharing this and our experience of it but in the moment we know what to do like mm -hmm. if you're walking across if you're walking across the road and you see a car coming you're putting out your hands to, to save your spouse or to mm -hmm. jump back we naturally know what to do and, and that's yeah. what I, I liken it to i liken it to we're so conditioned and and and, and think that we have to know everything and, and so that we can control situations and manage situations and work out what's going to happen if the worst happens. And in the moment, we know what to do. Mm -hmm. There and then, you don't even have to think about it. So I'm, I'm saying that because you mentioned, you know, that we know what to do. We, we're actually quite calm in those situations and we just do it. I'm saying that because sometimes when you hear people talk about and understanding whatever it is we're talking about the three principles or and spirituality as well people i used to have this question at the beginning well when will you know when will you know what's the right thing to do and what's the you know when will you know when to act how do you know it's not your wisdom and i'm saying you'll be acting yeah <laughs> you'll be in action it won't even be a it won't even be a thought for you to yeah 
getting up in the morning, you just get up, swing, swing your legs over and you're up. Mm -hmm. There's just those things are happening. Life is happening, continuously happening. And then we have a dialogue about life happening. You know, there's this dialogue saying, this is happening. I've got to do this. But it's already happening anyway a lot. Right, all right. But, and, and that's what I really got to see in, um, on my journey of the principles is that it's great to understand the nature of life and, and the nature of experience and the nature of thought. Yeah. Um, just to have an understanding and have, um, just to understand what's happening as human mm -hmm. beings that when our minds are racing and, and um, we're not performing as well as we used to if we're in our workplaces or in our relationships but also um, on a deeper level life is happening whether we know what's going on or not <laughs> whether, we got, whether we got a clue or not <laughs> whether we know the principles or not life is happening we, our life was happening before we came across the principles and any other understanding in life people have had people who have kids they've built houses they've got on holiday they've shot they've been broke they've got money listen life carries on mm -hmm. yeah. yeah right and it's happening anyway we yeah. have a natural instinct that that does yeah. what it does yeah. Yeah. So, what? How has your understanding deepened, shifted? Like, I think that's part of what you're speaking to now is sort of that deeper realization of like life is unfolding, and that's what the principles is is pointing to. But the principles are the pointers; they're not it. And so, yeah. I'm, 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 would you just share a little bit about how that's yeah, shifting, sure. changing for you? Sure. Yeah. Um... I think it was 2018 that I started to want to go a little bit deeper into understanding the whole human experience, not just my psychological experience. Mm. Um, I'm brought up a Catholic. I went to Catholic girls' schools, and so I've always kind of had that in the background, girls' primary and secondary school. But we don't go to church, when, you know, but I just see myself as someone that was spiritual before I came to the principles. Mm -hmm. So I've always been someone that's been on a spiritual search, um, mainly for my own, mainly originally started to fix myself, <laughs> you know, get rid of that critical mind, have more confidence, you know, be more, more dynamic or more confident, <laughs> you know, all those things that we're taught that we should be okay. um, to stand out in life. And, and, you know, and then a lot of the time underneath it all, we're not feeling that great about ourselves, but we're trying to mm -hmm. feel better and feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, just wanted to explore a little bit more. Like, I, I, I felt that I was getting really caught up in the head, you know, in my mind about the principles. And I could hear people talking in a different way of more of a, an expanded experience of of life and, and, and where we fit into that life. Mm -hmm. um, and so in 2018, I started exploring non-duality and um, with different people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of come full circle now because I feel like I've come back to looking at the principles, the psychological understanding of it, but also seeing the broader what Sid was talking about when he was talking about the formless. Mm -hmm. um, just recently read this, The Missing Link again. We had a Missing Link book club, which I led. But um, last, what, what triggered it really for me was the, the death or murder of George Floyd. Um, and Rahini, myself and you spoke about this a little bit. So when that happened, um, we were just going into lockdown as well. And I, I hadn't done, uh, I normally kind of working out of London in different places. Uh, and, and I'd spent a little bit of time at home and hadn't been working in the same way. And then when that happened, I don't know, I just felt, I didn't know, I just had so much pain, so much, so much was coming up for me around that. I, I, didn't, I couldn't even explain it myself. I remember just feeling just debilitated. I just didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to think. Um, 
just felt lots of feelings, angry and disappointed and then really happy that people were speaking up and it wasn't just black people speaking up and it's just so, you know, just like this arising in the world. So it was really, really confusing. Mm -hmm. um, but it also brought up stuff for me around my feelings. I had lots and lots of different feelings, mixed feelings about things um, around racism and it brought up memories of things of, of racism in the, in the past. Um, and it was so painful that I, I chose to come out of the three principles for a little while. One of the reasons as well was that I, um, I was seeing things online. Mm -hmm. People were writing openly about things, which was a lifesaver really, because I was thinking, gosh, just, no one's saying anything, any of, anything about what's happening at all. And I was seeing the kind of responses that you were getting and I was just like, whoa, people don't want to be in a mailing list and they, they you know, like see the pushback that you were getting. Mm -hmm. And Amy as well, Amy Chen Mills, she was getting pushback. And I just thought, wow, what is going on, on here? Really, what is going on? What is life about? We're in these spiritual communities and you're seeing these kind of things happening, reflecting the wider world. Mm -hmm. I come in these communities to feel safe. Mm -hmm. right? uh, I, bear my, I, I, I say more about myself and my vulnerabilities in these groups than I would anywhere else, unless I'm in therapy or with my really close friends. Mm -hmm. and, and they started to feel not safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's exaggerated because there were people responding very, very positively yeah. as well. But, yeah. you know, at that time, you start focusing on some of the, the comments and feedbacks feedback that were happening and it didn't feel very loving and caring mm -hmm. and there was a lot of silence mm -hmm. nothing's being said by the wider community and the leadership mm -hmm. um, and so I took some time out I worked with a therapist around and he has a three principle non-dual background mm -hmm. I chose him because I didn't want to go to a regular person mm -hmm. And the, the thing that I really got was to embrace my humanity. Mm. I had been using the principles as a way to, not consciously, mm -hmm. I can't say consciously, but my understanding of the principles had got a little bit skewed. And I was very focused on my psychological understanding and we're sharing in that way as well. Mm. Now, a lot of the times we share and, and then it, it lands in a beautiful spiritual place, but a lot of the, the work, just my own understanding of it, where I felt very comfortable was in the psycholo understanding the psychological, emotional variance, you know, changes and, and stating what that is and explaining that. And, um, when I was having my own experience of these really deep feelings, that explanation wasn't enough. It didn't work. It didn't work that, you know, I was thinking, but this is just my feeling or, you know, nothing from the outside can give me these feelings. Mm -hmm. you know, that experience, but I was looking out into the world and thinking what's happening out there doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I'm having really intense feelings, really scared. I was really scared. My brother lived in America. I was really scared for him being out there as a black man in mm -hmm. New York. Doesn't matter, he's got a senior job. I was worried about him, mm -hmm. um, my family. Um, and I was just worried about where the world was going with administration and just, you know, America leads and other countries feel that they can do the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. And we had the Brexit, we just come out of Brexit. We're just kind of on the Brexit, still in that Bre Brexit conversation. So you can see the world changing and people being more vocal about their racism. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's always been there, but it was just more vocal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and blatant in your face. You know, even in the UK, people were attacking people and yeah. it was not like in America, but it was just different. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I see it as a gift. I see it as a gift now because me having those deep feelings I mean, they really were painful and I was totally confused and numb as well. Mm -hmm. Just in and out of different feelings. I, and I was quite isolated. I didn't know who to talk to. And then in the three principal 
community. I didn't feel like I could talk to people. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a few friends that I have in the community that are black. Um, and we had like weekly talks and catching up. That was at, you know, at the time. And um, what I really got to see was where I was trying to avoid some of those feelings that I was having, the, the difficult feelings, and maybe had been doing that in my life. So the, the principles are an understanding of how we work as human beings. It doesn't say to avoid your feelings or to get rid of them. Mm. But automatically we go to that, automatically we think, oh, wow, I feel so good, this amazing understanding. I shouldn't have this feeling. If I have these feelings, I don't, I'm not seeing this properly. I'm not getting it deep enough. Mm. Right. Or, um, you know, I need to do another course or, or, or this, something's not right. Why am I not getting this? You know, there's, there's a, the principles are not saying this. It's, I always say, say it when I'm sharing it and teaching it, that it's not, it's not about being happy, but human nature is we want to be happy all the time. Mm -hmm. We want to feel good. You know, I, I always say that, that it's just what we go with. That's our inclination. We want to feel good because we know it's our natural state. So we're trying to feel good in so many different ways, looking for our well-being in all these different places, mm. in all the wrong places, I always say, mm. right? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And really, um, it's right here. Mm. But that's what I really got. It's just like, oh, wow, okay. Um, let me embrace those feelings of hurt, sadness, some of the hurts that may have come up from the past, um, isolation, people not wanting me here because I'm black, because of the color of my skin, or not liking me for the color of my skin, or other people that look like me or brown, the hatred in the world for, for all types of people. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it just made me embrace all of that and embrace those feelings when I have them, sorry, and embrace those feelings when I have those feelings. Mm -hmm. We all have feelings of hate and, and, and we have a multitude of feelings. So, yeah, I just got to just be with them and, and stop running from them and be, and be with the discomfort. Mm. Learn to be with the discomfort of, because it's not going to kill you. It feels like it's going to, but, you know, when you just give it a little bit of space, it allows you to, to see, okay, I can actually be with this feeling. I can actually befriend it. And I can actually see that this feeling is, is thought created and, 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 and it is an energy that's going to go. But the way, the, way to, so wait, the way to that freedom is through it. Hmm. Um, it's like, you know, I, I see myself as someone that takes lots, I've taken lots of young people in my home over the years. Um, over 20 young girls have lived with me. I normally have one or two living with me. Mm -hmm. And I see it like opening the front door and there's someone at your front door that you don't really like. It's just this analogy that's come up for me recently. And, and and you've got them at arm's length, or you've got them, you've got the keychain on, and you're kind of talking to them like this, <laughs> or through the keyhole. <laughs> yeah, you don't really want them to come in. That's like some of the feelings that we don't want to deal with, or, or they feel uncomfortable. And I'm still exploring this. It's not, you know, yeah. it's, it's what's opening up for me. I'm not saying I've got this at all. Yeah. It's this is life. Yeah. Right? And it's like having the, and it's like having them out there. Uh, and then opening up the door and bringing them closer. Mm. Mm -hmm. And bringing them closer till they disappear. Mm. Yeah. And, and what I was doing before is seeing those feelings, thinking, oh, they'll pass soon. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, thoughts come and go and they, and they pass. But I was, in a way, I was avoiding the felt experience. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's been really helpful because um it's just op i've just opened up more i'm not afraid of being a human being i'm not afraid of being silly i've, I've had more freedom now as a human per as a person mm -hmm. in myself having conversations like this on the phone i'm I i'm just myself you know we we make mistakes we scream and shout we do things we we get annoyed we, we we're happy you know 
sometimes we can deal with life feel that we're, we're in the flow and, and life's really easy and sometimes it really feels really difficult and, and then we feel really low or like we don't know what we're doing or we feel lost or we want to change our jobs or our careers or what we're doing sometimes money flowing in and sometimes it's not and I'm just seeing more and more that um this we're having a human experience that's what we're here having a human experience um and as much as it looks that we're all separate in the world that we have something that bonds us together really and that is that shared universal intelligence that we come from that we're created from that is just flowing through us naturally mm -hmm. Mm. And keeping us you know alive and 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 you know bringing thoughts to our minds and bringing energy to our bodies and, and, and feelings and we can't avoid a human experience we cannot avoid a human experience we can't be happy all the time it's not all right but what i have seen is as we bring those experiences and feelings closer or just when i say that I really we're just bringing our attention to them. Can't bring mm -hmm. them closer to us, but mm -hmm. you know, we put our attention on them. When we feel that's the right thing to do, sometimes we just avoid stuff. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I when I pause and bring bring that those you know just acknowledge those feelings and know that or, and feel them. Sometimes they're gone in five seconds. Sometimes they're gone in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Or you know, or it might feel really difficult, and then it, they kind of just. You just feel it and and then as you go i, I i'm really enjoying exploring i can I, can, I can I know this feeling i can see this feeling i'm aware of this feeling i'm aware of my thoughts i'm aware of my body and then the, and then you start to notice that there's something that's still that's always there that's constant that's always there it doesn't get troubled it doesn't get upset it's just constant, this energy, this flow, this intelligence behind life that doesn't feel broken, doesn't feel depressed. It's it's like the container for all of the, for our whole experience. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm exploring at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, it's the formless energy that Sydney Banks talks about. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we are the form. Mm. You know, we are the form in that. This human body is the form inside of that. Our feelings are part of the form. Our thoughts are part of the form. Others, anything we know and see is part of that form. Um, and it's happening simultaneously. There's this formless energy that we don't see, but it's there keeping us alive. My heart's beating, your heart's beating, we're breathing. It's got nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. And we've got how many cells that are working and operating, we're blinking, laughing, and just seeing that more life is has that natural flow to it and is operating without us being too involved in it yeah mm. and there's a freedom to that when i when i see that and and just check in a little bit more of myself because it's kind of it's like it's like we're veiling and, and hiding that that essence of who we are there is no right way to share the principles or there is no right way to share what we're seeing as spiritual human beings. Um, and I'm really glad that I've had that experience this last year because I felt embarrassed about it. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, what's happening to me? But it's also brought me out a little bit more. I see that I can't not talk about, um, for me, um that's looking at racism and 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 exploring that is a gateway for me to, to awaken to a deeper part of who we are as human beings that's my life experience i'm a black woman mm. in the in this world I'm a, in this world i'm a black woman right so for me to avoid having conversations about that i'm avoiding maybe an, an opening for me mm. to see something mm. deeper about myself and life mm. and i really think it's really important i really encourage people to Bring, bring their experience. Your experience is valuable. That's why we're here on this earth. You know, ex bringing our experience to what we're learning around spirituality and non-duality you know, and, and the three principles. It is, 
an opportunity and an invitation to see and be more aware of that, that essence that is const always there, even when we forget it, even when we don't feel it. Yeah, it's really beautifully said, Jackie. And, and I think that sort of the metaphor that we use for the community in terms of the rewilding, like that's our way of saying like embrace it all. And by embracing it all, being present to it all, you wake up more to that formless energy of who you are. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's like welcoming, that's what I call it. It's mm -hmm. just a welcome it, welcome it. It's like opening the front door. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, I love like, that. Open the front door and, you know, so much of our lives we're, we're like this at the front door, yeah. pushing things away or kind of defense. Um, and it's, it's, I'm not suggesting anybody forces that process. But right. that's what that's what's opening up for me yeah. is start opening up a bit more and and reach out to people that I haven't spoken to in the last year because I didn't really want to have conversations. I needed mm. to be on my own. I needed to be with my family. I needed to to stop learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I needed to stop doing courses. I just needed to <laughs> jump, get on with my life, pay my yeah. bills, and get on with my life and my family, and and enjoy my life in lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And I know we've gone a little bit over time, so I really appreciate your generosity. And it's such a deep, rich conversation and the feeling of that deepening within yourself, like that that's coming through in what you're sharing. Like I'm feeling that I'm being impacted by that. So thank you. Yeah, I just I just hope we can do some more of this because yeah. you know you're amazing, Jackie. Really, honestly, I mean that in a very deep, heartfelt way. I think you're really eloquent, and I think you you teach this understanding beautifully. Thank you. It's yeah. been a real privilege to listen to you. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm impacted. I feel really moved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you both for inviting me, and I've enjoyed our conversation together. Yeah, it's lovely. Well, let me pause the recording now.